For what purpose does the gentlewoman from New Mexico seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I move that the House suspend the rules and pass the bill S-209. The clerk will report the title of the bill. Senate 209, an act to amend the Indian Self-Determination and Education Assistance Act to provide further self-governance by Indian tribes and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentlewoman from New Mexico, Ms. Holland, and the gentlewoman from Wyoming, Ms. Cheney, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from New Mexico, Ms. Holland. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous material on the measure under consideration. Without objection. Madam Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentlewoman is recognized. Madam Speaker, S-209, the Progress for Indian Tribes Act, introduced by Senator Hoven of North Dakota, will enhance the Department of the Interior self-governance process and provide Indian tribes with greater flexibility. The Indian Self-Determination and Education Assistance Act is one of the most important legislative acts affecting Indian country in the last 40 plus years as a key driver to improving tribal communities. Enacted in 1975, the act was a Nixon-era initiative signed into law by President Gerald Ford, yet strongly supported by Democrats at the time. Pursuant to the act, tribes are able to enter into self-governance contracts, commonly known as 638 contracts, with BIA and IHS, the Bureau of Indian Affairs and the Indian Health Service, to manage and administer federal Indian programs. In 1994, the ISDEAA was amended by adding Title IV, which authorized tribes to enter into negotiated compact agreements with the BIA, under which tribes can assume control of the department programs and associated funding and tailor those programs to the needs of their tribal communities. In 2000, the act was again amended to add Title V, which authorizes similar tribal compacts with the Indian Health Service, the IHS, through the Department of Health and Human Services. There are more than 350 self-governance tribes in the country, and the vast majority of them manage programs within both DOI and IHS and have achieved great success. In my home state of New Mexico, there are six Pueblos engaged in self-governance, the Sandia Pueblo, Santa Clara, Taos, Cochiti, Jemez, and Okeawinge. Tribal self-governance programs are successful in their acknowledgement that tribes have the right to govern themselves with minimal federal oversights and maximum flexibility to meet local tribal needs. However, significant differences between the Title IV and Title V amendments have forced self-governance tribes to operate under two separate sets of legislative and administrative requirements. The Progress for Indian Tribes Act would largely reconcile these differences, streamline the self-governance process, improve efficiencies, and strengthen reservation economies. Passage of the Progress Act is a top legislative priority for self-governance tribes and is supported by the National Congress of American Indians, United South and Eastern Tribes, the Alaskan Federation of Natives, the Midwest Alliance of Sovereign Tribes, the Affiliated Tribes of Northwest Indians, and many more Indian tribes. The administration and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce are also on record in support of this legislation. This legislation is the product of over a decade of bipartisan negotiations, which is why S-209 passed the Republican-controlled Senate on a voice vote. If bipartisan consensus was so easily found in the Senate in this Congress, then it should be clear that this is a common sense bill that both sides of the aisle can support as well. I'm proud to be the sponsor of the House version of the legislation H.R. 2031, along with my dear colleagues, Representatives Tom Cole and Don Young of Alaska and others. I hope that you will join me in passing S-209 and sending it to the president's desk, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman from New Mexico reserves her time. For what purpose does the gentleman from Wyoming seek recognition? 
is uh, recognized. Madam Speaker, uh, I yield myself such time as I may consume. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, this is a very important bill. Unfortunately, the way that it's currently written raises some significant concerns. Uh, as the representative of tribal communities in Wyoming, uh, I share very much uh, the notion and the concept of helping to increase uh, self-determination. Uh, but I believe that this bill, as it's currently written, unfortunately leaves unresolved some major issues with respect to, in particular, uh, Bureau of Reclamation water projects that could affect both tribes as well as non-tribal interests. Uh, in our western states where water is a scarce and precious commodity, water management interests must be carefully balanced. And I am concerned that S-209 does not strike that, that balance. Over the last several Congresses, House Republicans have offered solutions to the reclamation projects issues without the need for courts to step in to sort this out. Unfortunately, this effort was most recently defeated on a party line vote with little discussion from the Democrat majority. Unfortunately, we still are today faced with a situation where we've got a worthy goal that this, uh, this legislation is attempting to achieve, but it doesn't quite get there. Given these unresolved concerns, I must urge rejection of the measure as written and ask for a no vote, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentlelady yields back. The gentlewoman from New Mexico is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. As I stated before, this legislation is a result of over a decade of bipartisan bicameral negotiations. Since, since self-governance was first enacted in 1994, there had been no assumptions by tribes of Bureau of Reclamation projects, none. Under the 1994 law, the conditions, requirements, and limitations mitigating against any such tribal assumption of a Bureau of Reclamation project have resulted in no such assumptions. S-209 does not change the 1994 authority in this regard. This is why the gentle lady's concerns are completely unfounded and why we defeated an amendment on this in committee in the first place. More so, S-209 already contains a lengthy disclaimer specifically stating that it does not affect in any way the ability of tribes to take over programs or projects of interior agencies other than the BIA. Unless I'm not privy to yet another department reorganization, the Bureau of Re Reclamation is not part of the BIA. This bipartisan bill is critical to the furtherance of self-governance and improvements in tribal communities, and I strongly urge my colleagues to do the right thing and support this legislation, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman has the only time remaining. Madam Speaker, I have no further requests for time, and, what are, and since my uh, colleague has yielded back her time, um, Madam Speaker, versions of this bipartisan bill have lain before this House and the Senate for nearly two decades, passing each body several times. It's time to finally push, push this legislation across the finish line so that tribes can finally move to effectively manage programs for their people. I urge my colleagues to show their support for tribal self-governance and tribal sovereignty by passing S-209, the Progress for Indian Tribes Act. With, ya with that, I yield back the balance of my time. The gentlewoman from New Mexico has yielded back her time. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass Senate 209? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended, the bill is passed, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid upon the table. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from New Mexico seek 